Yeah, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 video. So we now have the full release of Gold 10 version 2.4 B18.5. Previously, there was a public beta for a limited time, which you could access via the Gold 10 Discord, and it would give you access to the payload, but it had a time limit of 30 minutes, after which it stopped working or shut down your PS4. So that was just a temporary thing. Now we have the full release, so there's no more time limit, and you'll be able to fully access this. Now, the main benefit of this version is a huge number of additional firmwares that are now supported with Gold 10. Now, previous versions, we were lucky if we got one new firmware in each version getting supported, like 9.03, I think, in one of the previous versions, like 18.3, 12.0 and 12.02 and B18.4. But this version adds a whole host of new firmwares. So we're talking 7.x firmwares, 8.x firmwares, 9.x firmwares, 10.x, 11.x, and then, of course, 12.0 and 12.02. So that encompasses firmwares that were previously not supported, especially ones like 11.02, 11.50, 11.52 now have full gold hen support with this particular version. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the payload set up and installed on your PS4. And then we'll go through some other features that have also been added because there has been a few additional uh, options added in this new version as well as all of the new firmwares that have been supported. Not only that, but we also got a new release of PS4 Debug by CTN to go along with the new version of Gold 10, which also now supports firmwares from 5.05 up to 12.02. So first of all, to get this up and running, we're going to go ahead and download the latest beta, which you can download from Sistro's Kofi page or Kofi page. So all you got to do is simply enter a donation amount. If you want to leave a donation, I would recommend it to support uh, the Gold 10 team's work. But otherwise, if you don't want to enter a donation, you can just enter zero and then select the Get Now option just to get the download if that's what you want. And then you can go ahead and check out, which will give you the download link. So given the fact that Gold 10 now supports all of these additional firmware versions, it's probably a good idea just to cover how to actually get this version of Gold 10 running using the various different jailbreaks that are currently available. So of course we do have the new Blu-ray drive exploit that was released, but it has not yet been chained with the kernel exploits to run the jailbreak, so I cannot show that yet. So starting with the latest jailbreak that uses the Lua exploit and the Lapse kernel exploit to run the jailbreak, which requires one of the supported Japanese games, so you need to have one of those games as well as the auto Lua loader save file installed on your PS4 that can be used to load it, which is this project here. Now I do have a full tutorial that shows you how to set up that jailbreak up to firmware 12.02, which I'll leave linked in the video description. Assuming you have that set up, all you need to do is open up the zip file for Gold 10 and then extract the Gold 10.bin file to the root of an XFAT formatted USB drive and simply rename the Gold 10.bin file to payload.bin instead and then plug that USB drive into your PS4, at which point you can then load the jailbreak by running one of the compatible Japanese games, which will then run the modified save file for the autoloader, and it will then copy the payload from the USB drive to the internal storage, so that the next time you want to load it, you can just run it from there, the USB drive will no longer be required, and you now have the latest version of Gold 10 running on your PS4. And that works from firmwares 5.05, I believe, all the way up to 12.02, and that's how you get up and running with the latest jailbreak with this version of Gold 10. Now, if you want to get up and running using the previous jailbreak, which is the PP Pwn jailbreak, uh, which works from firmwares 7.00 all the way up to 11.00, well, in that case, obviously, there's so many different devices that can run that jailbreak that send the network data to jailbreak the console. So you might have a Raspberry Pi setup or a Luxbox Pico setup or, you know, any other number of different devices that can be used to run the jailbreak on the console. So in which case, you pretty much don't need to update anything. You can just, again, copy the gold10.bin payload from the 7-zip file over to the root of a FAT32 or XFAT formatted USB drive. You do not need to rename the payload this time to payload.bin, just leave it as gold10.bin and you should be good. Plug it into your console and then run your normal pppwn exploit and that should get up and running with the jailbreak. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're wanting to run it using a previously unsupported firmware, then things are a little bit different. In my case, I'll use my computer to run the pppwn exploit here on an 8.52 console that was previously unsupported. So in this case, I'll head over to the network settings, set up my internet settings using pppoe with ppp as the username and password, and then simply enter automatic for all of the other settings. 
At which point, if I head to system settings and console information, you can see we are on firmware 8.52 that was previously unsupported. Now what I can do is simply go back into that 7-zip file and in there you'll see the pppone underscore stage 2 folder. If we go in there, we have stage 2 version 1.05. Inside there, we have all of the different stage two loaders for all of the supported firmwares. So we can take one of the firmwares that previously didn't have a stage two loader like 8.52 and extract that out to my desktop here, at which point I'll use one of the applications on my computer to run the jailbreak, the pppone GUI. I'll open up this program and drag in the stage two loader for 8.52 and then simply select from the firmware list firmware 8.52 because that's the firmware the console is running. And then I can simply select the Ethernet adapter, uh, which is connected to the PS4, and then run the exploit. And that will run the pppone exploit on the PS4. It will send the required network data to the console to run the jailbreak. And once that runs successfully, it will then give us the pppone message, and then it will copy the payload again from the USB drive to the internal storage. And once that's complete, it will then load that version of Gold 10. So the next time you want to load it, the USB drive will no longer be required because the payload is now on the internal storage. And that is how we get up and running with the jailbreak here on a previously unsupported firmware using the pppone exploit, which is fantastic. And again, I could have also loaded it using one of the other jailbreaks. And speaking of which, if you're on a firmware from 7.00 all the way up to 9.60, you can also use the lapse exploit from the web browser to run the jailbreak. Uh, in this case, you don't need to copy any payloads because the payloads will be included in whichever web host you're using. So and I would probably recommend using NASCI's host at the moment. We can just head over to the web browser and go to nasci.github.io forward slash PS3 to access the site. And that version, I believe, supports firmware 7.00 all the way up to 9.60. It may take a day or two for NASCI to include the new Gold 10 payload, but it should get added for all of those supported firmwares so that you'll be able to simply load it from there just by selecting the button and running the jailbreak and that will get it up and running in just a few seconds. Obviously, there is an issue at the moment with black screens and save data corruption on those firmwares using this particular exploit. So if you're using the web browser to load it, you might want to also enable the plugin, the AIO fix plugin, which can resolve the black screen and save data corruption issues, which I have already made a video on. I'll leave a tutorial down in the video description to fix those issues. And if you're using one of the older jailbreaks from the web browser, like 5.05, 6.72, etc., 9.00, you can use the older exploit hosts or host them yourself. Uh, if you're using one of the older ones, you can use, uh, I think, caro218.ir is still up, which supports all of those older firmwares. And then there's kmepps4.site, which supports 9.00. So you can use those, but typically they do not get updated with the latest Gold 10 payloads. So what you can do instead is simply run the bin loader option in those older exploits. And then once that's running, you can then use a payload injector on your computer or phone, like Netcat GUI or some other payload injector, to just load the latest Gold 10 payload into that payload injector, enter the PS5's IP address, and port number will be either 9020 or 9021, and then inject the payload, and that will get it up and running using those older jailbreaks too. So that's pretty much how you get Gold 10 running using all of the previous jailbreaks that are available and supporting all of these new firmwares. Now, in addition to this, we also have PS4 Debug that has been updated too, and it also supports firmwares from 5.05 all the way up to 12.02 as well. So PS4 Debug is now fully functional on those firmwares that were previously unsupported too. And PS4 Debug, if you're unfamiliar, can be used for remote debugging the console, uh, also using trainers, mod tools, you know, injecting mod menus into your games, that kind of thing, you know, and actually creating your own cheats for your games. You can do all of that stuff with PS4 Debug and more. So that is now also supported. So to get PS4 Debug running on our 8.52 system here, we can head over to Gold 10, head over to the server settings and enable the bin loader server. And that's now listening on the PS4's IP address on port 9090. And now if I switch over to my desktop again, I'll use a payload injector to inject the payload for PS4 debug. I'll just drag it in here and then simply select 9090 as the port number. And then of course, enter the PS4's IP address and inject the payload. And as you can see, we get payload received. And there it is, PS4 debug is now running on 8.52. 
So that brings these obscure firmwares, the 8.x, 7.x firmwares, up to the same level of support as all of the main firmwares that have had support for a long time. It kind of brings everybody up to the same level, no matter what firmware you're on from 5.05 right the way up to 12.02, which is fantastic news. So that is the main benefit here of this new version of Gold Hen. But what I'll do is I'll also just quickly cover a couple of the other improvements that have been made in this version, just to show some of the new features that have been added here if you miss them. So what we have, first of all, is that if you press options on any of your applications and go to information, it now shows a time played at the top as well as game starts. Should show the amount of times that the game has been launched, I believe, or the application's been launched, and then the amount of time that you've spent in that application is now displayed. So that's a new feature that's been added. Another new feature is in the Gold Hen settings. If we go to the settings option, we now have a date and time option, which allows you to update the date and time using the internet. So if your console is connected to the internet, it can use google.com to sync the time, the date and time for your clock. So you can just select that option and it will update it uh, with the current date and time and it will sync it online. That way you don't have to manually enter it if you have like a dead CMOS battery or you know the, the clock's been unsynced in the past because the CMOS battery died, even if you replaced it, it'll probably keep resetting the clock every time you restart the console. So to avoid, you know, having to manually enter, re-enter the date and time every single time you reboot the console, you can just select this option and update it and sync it with the internet, which is great. And then you can also enable the auto update of the date and time so that whenever you relaunch Gold Hen, uh, it will automatically sync the date and time after it loads Gold Hen so that you don't have to come into this menu and select the option to update it every single time. It'll just do it whenever you launch it. And it also has an option for offline users, uh, which is the ability to just set it to the 1st of January 2025. So if you're offline, you can just set it to that date, which again is for people who have it, you know, maybe reset way back to like 1970. That will get it up to the current year if you're offline because it cannot sync it with the internet. There's also been an improvement made to the bin loader server as well to allow it to load ELF files instead of just .bin files because there's two payload types. There's the ELF payloads and the bin payloads and I think the previous bin loader would only load uh, bin payloads whereas now it's also supporting ELF payloads as well. So the two different types of payloads can now be loaded using Gold 10's bin loader. So that pretty much sums it up here for this new version of Gold 10. We have a ton of additional firmwares now supported all the way from 5.05 up to 12.02 pretty much all the firmwares in between are supported and they're all kind of up to the same level with full gold hen support and ps4 debug support now included which is great and especially given the fact that most homebrew applications now especially the main ones that people use are firmware agnostic as well which means most of them will also work on all of these obscure firmwares that previously were not supported is fantastic it brings everyone up to the same level which is great so yeah fantastic news there so anyway that's going to do it for this one hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one